Welcome to Blue Knot Foundation, uh, Blue Knot Day. My name is Jane Daisley Snow, and I'm going to take you through a couple of art therapy activities that I hope you can use to help with self-regulation and grounding. I've been a trainer for Blue Knot Foundation for the last couple of years and work in private practice as a, a psychotherapist and as an art therapist. So I hope you enjoy um, this activity and the rest of your day. Just bear with me for one minute. I'm just going to adjust the camera so you can see the demonstration. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of activities, as I said, that can help um, settle your nervous system and calm um, your minds. The first one is bilateral drawing and the second one is a mandala drawing. So often when we're stressed or anxious, our minds can be flooded with distressing what if thoughts and catastrophizing about the future, or we might actually be dwelling on painful experiences in the past. So expressive therapies such as sensory motor art therapy are what we call bottom up approaches because they engage our senses, our bodily felt sense and our instinctual movements and rhythm in the present moment. So as the, the first one, um, the title is bilateral. It's bilateral because it engages both parts of the brain and also both hands. So I'm gonna take you through this first off. So just make sure that you sit comfortably on a chair. Um, I've got a piece of butcher's paper here that has been anchored down with some masking tape and I've got some um, uh, oil pastels and some crayons. So you just choose two um, crayons. It doesn't matter um, what size, as long as they're comfortably held in your hand. And just take a few deep breaths before you start. Feel your feet on the ground. And whenever you're ready, you can place the crayons at any starting point. It could be at the top of the page, it could be in the middle, could be below. The purpose is not to create an artwork. So it's not about a goal to get an artwork. This is often what intimidates people because they think art therapy is about making beautiful art. It's about a process. And in this case, it's a process of being able to spontaneously squiggle with both your hands using chalk or pastels or pencils. So I'm going to start from the bottom here. You might be able to hear the sounds of the crayons on the page. Again, whatever movement your arms and your hands want to do, you're guided by them. And the pace, it might be that you do things fast or you might do things slowly, one hand at a time or both together. Be aware of your breathing. And this helps engage both the hemispheres that can support integration in your brain. Yeah, you might like to breathe in as you're going upwards and breathe out as you're coming down. And whenever it feels right, you can complete. 
An extension to this particular squiggle drawing is to look at the negative spaces, the spaces that have not been filled in by the crayons and perhaps um, choose another color to fill in the spaces. So you can spend some time doing that. You might find certain shapes, like I'm looking at square shapes here to be able to fill in. Again, it's not about creating anything beautiful that you want to hang on the wall. It's more about engaging your senses in this moment with the colour and the line and the shapes. Or it might be that spontaneously you've created a uh, an image that's there. I can see a couple of balloons in mine. So you could, if you wanted to, just create a, you know, outline of those, perhaps this, the thread coming down. So all you're doing is highlighting what has spontaneously emerged within the squiggle drawing. Okay, and then if you want to engage your thinking brain to complete this activity, this is the top down approach and can sometimes be helpful to integrate the process is to give the squiggle drawing a title and that title might be related to the shapes that have emerged or the colours, or, or how you felt when you were doing the particular activity. So I'm going to call this one Blue Balloon. Yeah. Okay. So the second activity I'm going to take you through is a mandala drawing. And the word mandala um, comes from the Sanskrit word called for circle. Many of you may be familiar with uh, colouring in books that have got templates, um, already designed templates of mandalas that people can colour in for self-regulation. Or you can create your own. And in this case, um, I'm going to demonstrate how we can create our own mandalas. Again, I'm choosing a black piece of paper simply because it's easier for this demonstration for you to see it especially on top of my squiggle drawing. And you can just use some masking tape to anchor it down. This helps movement if you need to. Get yourself a plate, place it down. And create the circumference of the mandala. I'm using these soft pastels here because they've got quite a lovely texture and you can actually use them on the side if you want to fill in areas or on the edges. When you finish doing the circumference, you just put a place, a dot within the center as a focal point. The beauty of mandalas is that it creates, the dot in the middle creates a central focus and the outer circumference creates a sense of containment or a boundary. Often when we're feeling stressed or anxious, we can feel like our thoughts are all over the place and we feel a little scattered or our emotions might be a little bit like a roller coaster. So it's really important to have something that can create this safe containment and focus a bit of like uh, when my children were small, the time at the end of the day away from the busy environment and the activities to be able to come into the safe place of the bedroom, cuddly toys to start to engage the senses, maybe some soft music and uh, perhaps a book to help read, to help them get to sleep. And this is not dissimilar to that in that it's creating this safe containment and a boundary. And this helps ground us and regulate. 
So once you've drawn the circle and the dot in the center, then you can start to choose the colors. You know, generally, you know, one might move from the central place to, to the outer. And again, no artwork is expected here. It's simply being drawn to the colors. This engages your senses, visual senses, and the texture of the crayon helps ground. I'm just gonna start with a shape from here. Again, you can hear the sound of the crayon. You might like to have some background music, quite like to have some background music, soothing music to be able to, um, you know, help with the calming. Again, that engages another sense, auditory sense. All the senses help bring you back into the present moment and out of your head, that is often the source of stress. So there's no expectation of doing anything beautiful. It's simply allowing your hand to move in whatever direction it wants to, in whatever shapes it wants to. It's quite satisfying that flicking movement. You might feel like you just want to get away from things or you're flicking away things. Again, this is where the unconscious gives expression through the movement and through the shapes. So you can continue this for as long as you feel necessary. And you could do a mandala in one sitting if you've got the time, or you can do this over a period of time. I'm using very thick crowns here, but a lot of my clients really enjoy using um, the finer uh, felt pens or watercolor type of paints, uh, uh, watercolor pens, I should say. Yeah, so again, just flow whatever movement feels right for you until you feel that you're completed for this session. So these are just two art therapy exercises that you can safely do within your own home. And I hope that they have been a useful um, activity, a demonstration, and that you can implement them in, uh, in your own time and space. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the activities um, on the Blue Knot Day. All the best. Bye.